Today we are going to talk about one of the most exciting things on the bicycle, the bicycle chain. Most of you probably have not even thought about the chain on your bike, even though it's required for its operation, you use it every day, and until there's a problem with it, nobody really thinks about it. But today we're going to show you why it's important to change it periodically. They do stretch and wear, and it can cause a lot of uh, damage to the other parts on your bike. So much like changing your oil on your car, this is one of those things that if you do it periodically, you'll save yourself a lot in maintenance and stuff down the road. So we just had this bike come in and this has what we would call an extremely worn bike chain. So as bike chains get used, uh, these pins where the, the links attach will stretch and then that can cause damage to your cassette and to your chain rings. So as it stretches, they won't nicely nestle into the teeth and there's a good way to check that. Several different ways to do it, but the way I prefer to do it is with a chain checker. This is kind of a basic one by Park. These are fairly inexpensive and they have indication of how worn the chain is, 0.5%, 0.75%, and that can give you an idea of when you should replace your chain. So on this particular bike, what you want to do is you want to be able to hook this in on one of the links and then if the chain is worn, this one is so worn, normally it would sit on top of this link, but it's actually dropping in all the way here. And if we reverse it, same problem, that it is just so worn. And if you look here on where it sits into the chain ring, the links aren't even coming close to lining up with the teeth anymore. So this one is so far gone that it probably should have been replaced years and years ago. We'll go over to a new bike here to show you how a new chain should look. So on a new bike, if we were to use the same tool, you can see that this will rest on top of the link showing you that it's still good. Reversing it, same thing. Now, if this was starting to wear, it would drop in on one, but would still sit up on the other. So that's how you would know that obviously with the new chain, there'll be no wear. We'll see if we can find one that has partial wear. So here's an example of a partially worn chain. If we put our gauge in here, we can see that it rests on the 0.75, but if we rotate it, it does drop in on the 0.5, so we know that this one's partially worn. Now, depending on the number of speeds on your bike, this is more critical if you've got like a 11 speed, 12 speed bike. The fewer the speeds, the less the chain wear is as important. You'd still want to replace it if it gets to the real worn part, but you've got a lot tighter tolerances with a bike with more speeds. So what I'm gonna do at the moment is a no-no for shifting, but since it does happen periodically, we're gonna test it. And this is called cross-chaining. And that is where you take the chain and you put it to the two extremes. So in this case, we're in the big ring in the front and the biggest cog in the back. And you wanna make sure that the derailleur can handle that amount of play. If we rotate and look at it from the back, the reason you don't wanna do this is because it puts a lot of strain on the links and that'll also cause that kind of premature wear. Since this gear will be the same as putting it in the middle ring and part way down the chain, there's always a better gear than going to the full extremes. Now we're gonna to go to the opposite extreme. We're now in the small ring in front. And we're gonna drop it all the way. Now here you can see that the derailleur is coming all the way back on itself and the chain's even resting on the frame. So ideally, again, this isn't a gear you would typically want to be riding in, but when we put the new chain on, we'll probably make it a link or two smaller since in the full extreme on the big, we it can still handle it, but we don't want the derailleur to be falling back on itself. So on this particular chain, this is the single use pin that was used. You can see it's got the little indent into it. It doesn't matter a whole lot since this uh, chain is just gonna be recycled, but we'll go ahead and remove it from there. So we're using the little basic park chain tool here. We have a more professional one as well, but this is the one that most people will have in their little home shop. Basically putting, dropping the link in, and then we tighten this in to push the pin out the other side. And you can push it all the way out so it drops out if you want. I usually leave it part way out in case you ever wanted to stick it back in for whatever reason. And now this will come apart and we can remove the chain from the bicycle. Now I will keep this for reference for sizing the new chain because we know that we want it to be just a hair shorter than, than what's here. And holding it up alongside the new chain is the best way to do that. So using our chain link pliers, we can get in so you can see this is the one with the master link because the little gap there. And then if you just push together, and that'll allow this to come apart and you can remove the chain. So 
So now that we have the chain off, you can really see the, the chain ring. Now most people ride in this middle ring, so if you look at it, you can see that the ring is worn almost to points. And this is a much wider circle from the chain stretching and running on that versus the larger one where you can see it still has kind of the flat part to the top of the teeth and a much narrower scoop. So we'll probably wind up having to replace the, the smaller chain rings in this case so that it will match with the new chain. Sometimes if you replace your chain and the rings and stuff are worn, the new chain won't mesh in with the, the worn cogs and uh, cassette and or freewheel depending on what your bike has. So bikes will typically either have a cassette or what's called a freewheel. I would say the majority of bikes probably have a cassette, which is what this is, where there are little splined teeth that will align with the hub on the rear wheel. And there's generally one larger pin, which in this case is right here. You'll see that that's much wider than the others. So that's how you know where to align it. And then a lot of these rings will be separate. Sometimes they'll have little spacer rings in between depending on your cassettes. Just make sure you're paying attention to how it comes apart. And then that'll lock on using the little locking ring. On a free wheel, there'll actually be a threaded part of the hub and then this will thread on to the wheel. So determining which one you have is important. Generally, if you have more speeds on your bike, like eight or more, it'll almost always be a cassette. Smaller numbers will generally be a free wheel, but it's not a hard and fast rule. So there are a lot of different tools used to remove freewheels and cassettes. Most Shimano ones will use the same, but here's just a random sampling of some of the different freewheel tools and cassette tools are out there for different brands of hubs because it's something that the bike industry could not standardize. So here I've put the tool in. Now, because this freewheels, we have to use what's called a chain whip. And this will allow us to hold the cassette in place. I'll we grab a wrench. Remove the lock ring. And then we can slide off the cassette. And then here, as we rotate it around, you can see that's where the bigger slot is. So if we're going to use our new freewheel that's not worn, we'll look for that, again, the little longer pin. thing will lock on. Now going on, we don't need the chain whip because we're tightening with the direction where it will lock. And had this chain been caught sooner, this part of the repair process would not be necessary. Now one other thing to check, which I'm just noticing here, is sometimes you'll need to use a little bit of a spacer ring, which you can put in on the back if you're putting a cassette smaller than what you had on there previously or narrower. Sometimes you need to take up a little bit of that space so you don't have that wiggle. In this case, we will have to pull this back off, put a spacer, I'll try cinching it once just to make sure we can't tighten it with what's there, but yeah. We'll get a small thin ring to put on the back and then this will be ready to go. So here's a couple examples of some spacer rings. I think for this one, this is what we're gonna use. It'll just slide right over the body because we don't need to take up a whole lot of space, just a little bit, and that should space it out just enough. Uh, they also have kind of larger, thicker ones, and you can see that this one actually has the teeth, just like the cassette, to kind of space it out a little bit more, and then that one you'd actually have to line up. If you are changing out your rear cassette, you can also change the gear range on your bike. So you can see that the largest hog on this cassette is much larger than this. They're both 10 speed cassettes. So as long as your derailleur can take it, if you were to put a larger one on there, it would give you a lower gear and easier to climb. You do have to adjust the length of the chain accordingly to accommodate a larger one if you're doing that or make the chain a little bit shorter if you're doing the smaller one. So chains come in different sizes, depending on the number of speeds of your bike. So here we have your single speed chain, eight speed chain. They do different versions with plating, nickel plating on the more expensive one, helps with rust and corrosion, nine speed, 10 speed. Again, two versions of the 10 speed, 11 speed. The more speeds you have, the narrower the chain is. So it is important that you match up what you have with the number of speeds on your bike. The one thing I will say with the eight speed chains is those will also work on like five, six, seven speed bikes. So if you have something that has seven speed, six speed, the eight speed chain is generally what you want to use. So most newer chains will use what's called a master link and there's some different versions of this, but this allows you to kind of connect the chain and then you can pull it together and that'll lock it in place. On the bike that we're currently working on, it's kind of an older one where you had a single use pin that would punch in place on those old Shimano's. 
So with that one, we'll actually have to punch the chain apart with a chain tool. And then the other thing I wanted to show on this bike is you always want to check the length. Generally speaking, you want to replace the length of the chain with the same as what's on there. But you also want to make sure that the person that worked on it previously put the proper length chain on it. So here you can see a worn chain next to the new chain. And as you scroll across, you can see how the old chain starts to get further and further along from the pin. Uh, other ways you can measure chain wear is with a, a ruler. If you go 12 inches and 12 lengths, it should line up center pin to center pin, but it's a lot harder to measure than if you have a chain checking tool. For putting the chain back on the bike, uh, one thing that can help is if you have an old broken bike spoke laying around or other stiff piece of wire, if you can kind of bend the ends in a little bit on each side, I'll show you here in a second, but we can use this to kind of hold the chain in place while you set up the master link. So you can just drop this in through one of the links. We'll show you that here in just one second. So now we're gonna go ahead and just feed the new chain in. You wanna be careful on the rear derailleur to make sure it gets fed in under this little tab here. And around the bottom pulley. Now we're gonna use that spoke I showed you earlier where we're gonna hook it here. We can hook it here and then this will allow us to line up our master link without having to be pulling on the derailleur. So here, if you look, there's a little wider spot on each one. So that kind of feeds in there. And then you can pull. There's two ways to do this. You can either use the pliers that we showed you earlier or you kind of pull it through. Uh, the other thing that I sometimes do is I will just pull it up, pedal it around until the master link is at the top. And as we can see here, this is going to be a little bit too long, so we are going to need to remove a few more links out of this so that the derailleur doesn't kick back. So before we snap that master link in place, we're going to, let's see, maybe we can ballpark how many links we're going to want to remove. It looks like probably three. We'll start with two links, see where that gets us. So here we're going to remove two of the links. We want to keep the inside one is what, what we're going to save, so we're going to count two over and then this will slide in and then we just tighten the tool and you'll see the pins start to come out the far side. So we got our link out, our master link back in place and then we'll check the length here again. So this is at one extreme and the derailleur isn't kicking all the way back but now we wanna, before we snap, snap the master link in place, I'm gonna shift it all the way up to the top and we're gonna shift it up to the big ring. Now again, this is called cross chaining, which you don't generally want to do, but we like to at least check to see if it's able to do so. So here, again, the derailleur is really stretched for cross chaining, but it will work. And if we go all the way down to the other extreme, which is cross chaining in the other direction, it's functional in both. So that's a good length for this chain. So now that we've done that, we want to make sure that our master link is snapped into place. So now I'm kind of looking for it to come up along the top here. So there's our master link. And it looks like it's sort of snapped in place, but if you're doing this for the first time or you're not sure, if you hold the brakes, the rear brakes, and then push on the crank, that'll help make sure that that's snapped into place. The other way to do it is you can get your chain link pliers in here and push on the outside and that, that's another way to make sure that it's snapped into place. If your chain is okay, regular maintenance is also a good idea. So with this little finish line uh, drivetrain kit, it gives you a little brush so you can clean it off. It comes with a little thing of degreaser. So you can run the chain through with the degreaser, clean all the gunk and dirt out, and then re-lube it with some finish line dry lube. So the other important part for good chain care is a good bike lube. When you get a new bike chain, there's gonna be some grease on it initially. So sometimes you'll wanna remove that, uh, some good citrus degreaser is a good way to go. And then you can choose your bike lube. For here in the desert where it's very dry and dusty, I generally like to use the Finish Line Dry Lube. It keeps the chain from getting as gunky. If you live in more of a wet climate where you don't have a problem with dust and there's a lot of water, sometimes the wet lube will work a little bit better. TriFlow is another popular one for kind of a wet lube. Lots and lots of ones out on the market. I've just been real happy with the Finish Line stuff, so I generally use that. But as long as you're making sure that you periodically keep your chain lube, that'll also help it last a long time. So if your cassette or freewheel is okay when you're replacing your chain, another nice thing to do is use a gear floss. And this is a way to clean out in between the cogs. And this allows you to bring your floss in between the rings. This one obviously is a nice clean new one, but it allows you to get in and it'll get all the dirt and grime that's built up 
inside. So regular checking of your chain lube maintenance will save you a lot of money down the road for not having to replace chain rings, cassettes. If you'd like to get a discount on any of the items that we talked about on this video, uh, you can use the coupon code CHAIN on CycleToGo.com and that'll get you 10% off on your order. If you have any questions when it comes to getting the correct size chain or other parts for your bike, feel free to give us a call.